We're all about pets. We're all about fun. We have the nicest people. Our deals are number one. You love Dave's. Dave's Soda and Pet City. We make shopping for your pet. Fun, 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 fun. We're filming. <laughs> Well, hello, everybody, and uh, first of all, I know this is a couple weeks late, but I hope everybody had um, a good Easter or a good Passover, whatever holidays. I hope you got to spend them with friends and family. So um, we are back. So first, before we discuss our, our new uh, setup here, I want to discuss Pucks and Paws. Pucks and Paws. They had like uh, 130 dogs, 140 146, dogs. 146, I think was the 146 count. 146 dogs. 146 converged Double. on the uh, at the arena at the hockey game. At the hockey game, the the uh, Thunderbirds hockey game last Saturday night uh, to benefit T.J. O'Connor and the mm -hmm. dogs were out on the ice. You got to go to our Facebook page and the Thunderbirds Facebook page. You can just see zillions of pictures of all the dogs on the ice. Fantastic turnout, great I couldn't event. be there, Matt was the star, right? Did you drop the puck? We dropped the puck, my dog and I came out and yeah. presented the teams the puck, and yeah. then there was a big dog parade. Yeah. Uh, tons of, it was like a dog show out on the- Yeah, it's um, very cool. So yeah, it was a, whoa, it was a great time. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> okay, it was a great- I have to put up. what I have to put up, but it was a great time, great event, and these guys are gonna have a good feeding. <laughs> yes. So um, anyway, what have we here, Matthew, okay. in our... Uh, in our cubes, our magic cubes. Uh, presentation cubes. We are... Ooh. We had some family planning We had some family going planning on. going on in this cube. We'll get to that yes. in a minute. Last time we had showed the more expensive pond fish, because we are coming into pond season now, yep. and it's time to get everything opened yep. up and start working outside. Uh, we have our entry-level fish right here, our beginner stuff. And you know, you know how you know these are babies mm -hmm. because they have little rubber duckies. Duckies to play with, their, yeah, isn't right. that cute? Yes. Like I said, it's, it just gives them something to yes. entertain. All right, we'll start with <coughs> this guy down, this school down here. These are called golden fatheads or golden minnows. And You're these, serious? I am serious, that is what they're called. These are called fatheads. Okay. Um, the small, tiny version, just like when you have feeder comets, there yeah. are also feeder versions of these that are called toughies. Oh, but these, that's what a toughie is? It's a toughie, but these are full grown. These okay. are actually the full grown. And they get about four inches long, and these serve an excellent purpose in the pond because they are one of the best killers of mosquito larvae. You're kidding. Mm -hmm. They will actually suck all the mosquito larvae out of the pond. They will also happily graze on hair algae that grows along, along the bottom of the pond. So it is a, actually a very, very, very handy little fish. So you should have these in your pond regardless? These are a great fish for a pond. They multiply rapidly, so you don't really yep. have to replace them. Yep. They are hardy. hardy. You can keep them in an aquarium at home, a five gallon aquarium. And here's the other thing, they are fun to breed. See all these little tubes down here? Yeah. The males, this is a, this, this is a carp type fish that guards its young like a cichlid. So he will actually, if you can see inside the tube, there's one right there is sticking out. He's actually fanning eggs right now. The female will go in there, lay in. Like with a towel or right. something? Yep, he's keeping air, yeah. water, the water circulating out around them. Yep. So he's guarding a little spawn right there. Um, so wait a minute, so the female goes in. Lays the eggs, lays he the goes eggs, in, spawns. He goes in. Fertilizes them, fertilizes and then he it, does the work, he, he guards them. And the female's off shopping. Female's off doing whatever. Yep, right. she's off shopping, having right. lunch dates and stuff like that. Right. Um, you can keep these singly, or you can, the best effect, as you can see, keep them in a school. Yeah, they look, form, at, look at over yep, there. They form a nice, tight, solid school. Yeah. Um, so it's fascinating to watch, especially in a pond when you're seeing them race around. Yeah. Uh, great. And the beauty of this thing, they are extremely inexpensive. You can, 99 cents? 99 cents for a full-sized one. Yep. And you can get four of them for two ninety nine. So this yep. is a great way to get a pond cycling. Yep. If you have a little whiskey barrel pond, one of those small little mini ponds, these are great fish for them because they only get up to about three inches. Right. That's about full size for them. So, and they're peaceful. They get along great. They get along they, with everybody. They don't bother anybody. They don't interfere anything. They Can don't. you have these guys in a regular aquarium? Absolutely. Yep. A perfect wow. five. Wow, did you see him just shoot up there? Yep. 
five to ten gallon tank with a yeah. they like strong filtration so if you have a good current or pump create it like a river yep. with stuff that they can hide in you can make a really fascinating river tank with very them. cool yep great 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 little fish and they're pretty look at that yeah, beautiful beautiful yeah, nice yeah. yellow color they show off beautifully do they eat goldfish food or regular fish food? they will take anything they'll take fish food flakes they love like i said mosquito larvae if you got a lot of insects or bugs around your pond. Yeah, They'll folks. If you have a lot, uh, if you have an indoor aquarium, you have a lot of mosquitoes Mosquito around. Things yeah, like, yeah, they're just, yeah. It's perfect. They're just perfect for that. But yeah, you can feed them blood worms, flake <laughs> food, anything. They are not. This is probably one of the easiest fish in the world to keep. Very easy one. Great for cycling aquariums too. And then you go over here. Okay, and we have these are called Our babies. babies. These are Sarasa comets, red and white comet goldfish. And if you look, a lot of times you see goldfish. They're yellow. Yeah. These actually are all just two colors on the red and white the darker red with the white yep. and so they if you look at them from the top look down from the top you can see the really pretty patterns oh they're gorgeous these are gorgeous and this is a great if you don't want to spend a lot of money for a big pond yeah and you want to start off small buy a little school of these and just let them grow and you can get these guys up to about 16 right. inches so these right. are again big fish but nice thing is though they've got all that nice color the, all that nice color and these are how much these are $2.99 each. You can get four of them for $9. So again, inexpensive. Uh, a really nice display if you have a little 50 gallon garden pond. Do like three or four of these and do six or seven of those with a right. lot of and plants. And all of a sudden by the end of the summer, you've, you've got, got fish, bigger fish. You've yeah, got you bigger got big fish. fish. Yep. And a great and inexpensive. And you spent no one. money. And you spent no money and you've got a nice right. inexpensive display. Right. Um, you can build onto it too. Uh, feeding these guys, feeding these guys, this especially for all pond fish this time of year. Yep. Right now, it's starting to warm up, and a lot of people are going to yeah, see. Yeah, sure it is. We think, we believe, yeah, is we're swiping up more. Still. So this is, how, is this a good view of us? Yeah, that's perfect. It's okay. perfect? Yeah, perfect. I know. Hi, hi over there. Okay, coming in to this time of year, your fish are going to start swimming around. They're going to start looking a little more active. Your instinct is, is you're going to want to feed them because they're yeah. up there sniffing around. You have to be careful. Right now, as the water temperature is still only about 50 to 55 degrees, the fish's metabolism is not fully up to speed yet to digest heavy food. Yep. So you have to feed them something that's easy to digest. This is actually much, almost like a light fish food that yep. can get them started, get their digestive tract working. Um, feed them light amounts as they become more active. Once you're getting your water temperature above 70 degrees, May, mid-May. Which mid -May, is gonna be in a while. Within, yeah, within yeah. about six, seven weeks from this yeah. point, then you can start feeding them up to your heavier food where they need all the weight yep. to store back up again. They start building back up. Uh, opening the pond. This is now when you're getting everything squared away. Yep. Uh, check your UV lights. If, you, if those of you have UV filters, check that the bulbs are, yep. are still in good shape. And we sell the replacement. We sell the replacement bulbs. Also make sure that you have, if there's any debris, winter debris, sticks, branches, leaves, things like that, that you skim them out of your pond. Uh, make sure that your pumps are all working. Uh, and then the other thing is also, as you start putting down grass seed, be very careful while you're laying that down. If you have a grass that slopes down pour your towards your pond, <coughs> you want to be careful that you don't put it uphill. That way, if it rains, you're not running the fertilizer into your pond. Oh. Okay, you have to be careful. Right. That we actually, somebody ran into that problem right. locally there. So always, if you're on the downhill from a, from a um, lawn, yep, yep, just make sure you're not fertilizing in that area. Everything yeah. is downstream. Okay. Um, but so, yeah, like I said, we've got a yeah, lot of got other good, fish. Good stuff. Good stuff all coming. We're get, we yep. keep them only going to get more. We keep it filled up all some actually all year round because yep. a lot of people keep these inside but now's the time that you can start thinking of getting into the warm weather feel getting your pond going um, and we even have fake lilies <laughs> we like, actually are getting the like um, fake news fake news exactly we are actually getting the um, all the outdoor plants to yeah, go with coming. them as well right. they are becoming within the next right. week or two right um, so plenty of ways Good. you can help get a great looking pond and right. get started wait a minute we have a question yeah, we got some plants in there. Okay, we have these in here. This is actually a um, Amazon sword. These we mainly we stock in here for the indoor tanks. This one, you can technically put them in a pond, but you'd have to definitely pull these out at the end of the season because these will actually die, die off. Um, these are more suited for an indoor aquarium. But like I said, if you you wouldn't really want see them that much inside a inside a pond, you go more floating things or pond right. side. But if you are keeping these 
Oop, he's jumping. These little fat head minnows inside a tank. This is a perfect. Uh, this I is think a, it's the same one. It's the same Holy one. Holy smokes! Going. Yeah, yeah. He likes the plant. He's really going for that. You could definitely dress the, dress it up and give him a nice little home with these guys. But so, yeah, he, uh, folks, you need a top on your yes. aquarium at oh, yeah. home for yeah, sure. Definitely have a hood. As you can see, these guys are a little bit of a jumper. So, definitely have a, a hood for your tank. But great beginner fish all around. I like them. Um, easy to keep, fun to keep, pretty. So if yeah. you have like one of those, I know at times, little whis whiskey barrel. Perfect fish hey, form. Perfect. Perfect. This these is the one guys you want to go. Guys. Yep, this yep. is the one you want because right. they stay small. All right, thanks. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Well, hello everybody, and we are here with um, with Shannon, and, and what's this? Uh, this is Max. This is Max, this killer dog here. Yeah. This is uh, uh, a Bernese Mountain dog? He's a Shih Tzu mix. Oh, he, he's a Shih Tzu mix. Yeah, he was rescued from TJ O'Connor. Yeah. And, and so the couple just dropped him off. This yep. is the first time he's... This is his uh, first time seeing me. Seeing you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, wh what are we doing for a summer tune-up? Um, they want to do a really short all over, um, you know, with a nice round teddy bear face, you know, nice summer cut, something that's going to last a few months and really take that bulk hair off. So he's ready for, you know, ready for this warm weather, even though Mother Nature psyched us out yesterday. So <laughs> tell me, <laughs> no offense, Max, but uh, tell me which bulk hair is coming off. All, I don't everything. see a lot of bulk hair. Well, he's wet right now and he's, yeah. he's about, you know, I'd say almost two inches long. I took a little bit off the back to kind of test, you know, the hair and see what I needed yeah. to do. Um, but you know, all this chest hair, everything from the head back is gonna go all nice and short. And how long, sorry, how, how long will it last? Um, on a dog like him, it should be, you know, a good eight to oh. 12 weeks. Oh, okay. Before it really grows back to the point where he'll need it, you know, really cut down again. Yep. And how about around his eyes and all that? Yeah. These, these guys are famous for uh, the, right? the the redness and redness the the, and leak, the, yeah, the yeah. drainage. So yeah. I know, I know, you don't like that. Yeah. He's not the best model, but right here you'll see he's got this this stuff going over into his eyes. And what I'm yeah. going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go in with my scissors and I'm going to trim that nice and low. Oh, what happens if he if he sneezes or something and the scissors? You just got to be Does very have careful. A blunt, a blunt. Um, it's it's all in skill. And my just eyes know, are watering. Just thinking about dog. someone being near my <laughs> eyes with a scissors. Well, when a dog started young enough, it, it, it's actually a training. Dogs should be trained to be groomed. It's not something that they learn to do naturally. That's why right. it's best to start them. You know, because in six the wild, months. you know, like the wild dogs of Africa, they don't they don't have like no. salons that no, they go they to. No, they don't. And, so you know, the younger but, you start them, they kind of know what what to expect. And yep. you know, there's 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 holds we do under the chin yep. and behind the ears here that really help them to sit still. And you Relax just have them. to yeah, you just have to be vigilant. It's like and a know. spot thing where you can. Oh yeah, I have Jedi mind powers. Yes, and you could just sort of. <laughs> yeah, I can kind of just. So you know, he's talk. actually he. This must be a pretty young dog. He's yeah, old. he's about two. Yeah. They're not sure he was a rescue, so they're not 100% yeah, yeah, sure yeah. on the age. But yep. he's he's approximately two. Yeah. And um, you know, he comes for regular groomings. Yep. So, you know, now that winter's over, we're going to shorten them up and yep. crimp them up and get them ready for summer. Yep. And so this is important because the season is here now. Even with the short hair, flea and tick stuff. Oh, it's still, you still you, need to be, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. regular on it. your, on yes, your preventions. On your right. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different <laughs> ones out there now that are available. Yep. Actually, um, in a couple of my groomings this week, I've already found ticks. Oh, you Even have? with the snow. Yeah. Yeah, I've found a couple ticks already this week, so you yep. know you got to stay on top of that even yep. through the winter. Yep. Yep. He, he wants to jump right so into he, my yeah, arms. Yeah, he's a, so he's a handful to. Grow. Yeah, he's. So you you already washed him. Yep. You have not blown dry nope. him. No, we're gonna yet. blow dry him. We're gonna towel. Yep. I towel dried him real well. I used yep. a, a brightening a brightening shampoo. Yep. A nice bright white to get, really bring out that that white color and kind of help with some of that staining on the. He's got a little bit on the paws too. In, in the eyes, and I'll trim a lot of that out as well. But that white, that whitening shampoo really takes that like that that yellow tinge yeah. out of the coat that they get just from every day being outside. And 
things like so that. The, so you like whitening on, yes. obviously, on these kinds yes, of... Yes, definitely. Right. I think it does a really great job. It really brightens them up and makes them But look if you have a yellow fresh. lab or something... What, um, you know, you just use a basic... You shampoo. don't want to take the yellow out. No, 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 of course not. Just, I don't think it works like that. But sorry. it'll make them nice and shiny. Right. <laughs> the enzymes in the shampoo really, really help, help bring the, the shine out in the fur. So the shampoos that we use, I assume there's no detergents in them? No, and, no, everything's yeah. all natural based. Um, I'm really, I'm really strict on you know using things that aren't aren't heavy and yep. you know chemicals or sulfates or things like that because yep. it's just not healthy for the skin right. or the hair. Do you use a conditioner on? I do, I do, and that's just a basic. It's more for moisturizing the, the skin underneath and the hair. Um, and it's a, it's a, actually an oatmeal based conditioner. Yep. Uh, it you know it smells great. It does a great job. Keeps them from drying out or flaking. Is it flaking. steel cut? Oh, I don't know. stop. Yeah. I have no idea, but it's a really it's really great for their skin. It really conditions them and get, keeps that that moisture in that coat that it, they need. So even if you have the kind of dog that you don't come in and get it groomed, mm -hmm. when you come in, even if you're using our baths, an oatmeal conditioner is you got to do it. Oh yeah, we have it in there. It's really great. I use the same product here in the salon. Yep. And you really should. Every dog should be followed up with a conditioner because even even with a natural shampoo, you're still you can still dry them out a little bit, and yep. it's just great to follow up with the conditioner. To ah, really so you would be the person to know. Yes. So I see we see people come in here all the time bathing their dogs. Yes. And I'm convinced that some people bite, bathe their dogs too often. Yes. And it and it dries out their skin. It, it I don't can, care what that you. is. Yep, that is very true. You wanna, you know, you don't want to do an every day or even. You know, some people do once a week, but I, that, yeah. really, that, that can really be damaging. Um, you know, honestly, a dog maybe twice a month. And like I said, there's pro uh, we've talked about it in the last show that there are products out there for those in-between maintenances, dry shampoos. Yep. And, that, you know, just if you're wanting to get rid of that, do that dog smell. Um, and you know what? So correct me if I'm wrong. So th especially this time of year, the Agawam dog park. So people yes. take their, they take them over the dog park. Yes. The dogs get filthy. Right. They come over, just... Put them in the top. Don't use the shampoo. Yeah, right? you can just use just, pure water. Just pure water, and, and then condition even right. Yeah, even you could condition them. Um, right. That wouldn't be that just wouldn't be too harsh. But lay honestly, off the shampoo. Yeah, the shampoo um, too much. It, it yep. takes the natural oil yep. out of the skin and the coat, yep. and they really need that to you know maintain yeah. a healthy coat condition. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll let you get back to work. Yes. Thanks, thank folks. You. Don't go away. Thank you. I shall return. <laughs> Dave Soda, Pet Food City. Hey folks, we're back and actually I, I wasn't sure what we were going to do this segment, but Shannon sort of gave me a uh, slap in the head and said, we have to talk about flea and tick control. Uh, you have to have flea and tick control on your dog and your cat. And it's especially uh, for ticks. I don't have to tell you that Lyme disease was named after Lyme, Connecticut, and we are in the world's capital of where Lyme disease hits. So not only for people, but certainly for your, um, your animals, you need to keep them protected. So there's a gazillion different ways to protect them. And one of the things that I, I like, stupid, uh, not, one of the things that has happened over the years is the flea control products have become less toxic to humans, but way more. What did you just drop, Matt? Scapey. <laughs> Scapey. <laughs> I think it's one of those hopper goldfish that got all the way over here. That have become less toxic to humans, but more toxic to the and pets, to the um, the insects, which is what you want. So you know we have all we've been selling Zodiac spot ons. I've been selling Zodiac stuff for. 40 years, uh, you know, since ever since the first, when I first started going in selling pet stuff, I started selling Zodiac. And, and things have evolved. And I'm going to say the current, what I use on my dog, is I love the Soresto collar. And um, it, it just, you put it on, it lasts for months, it kills fleas, it kills ticks, it you know, it kills all, almost everything. 
I don't think we've ever had a, uh, I know we have never had an issue with the dog becoming allergic to it, um, and it just works. And on top of that, we got a hold of a bunch of mail-in rebates for an extra $5. So they make it for dogs and they make it for cats. And some people come in and say, you know what, I don't want to spend 50 or 60 bucks on fleek. It is the best 50 or $60 you could ever spend in your life almost. You absolutely have to have it. So I don't have to tell you what happens, and, we, and unfortunately we have them. We have customers who come in and their dogs or people um, have gotten Lyme disease and those brown deer ticks, they're here and it is a very real threat. So I, this, I like to use the Soresto, they have for dogs and cats. Now, other people, and we sell tons of it, like to use Advantix, uh, I pick, yeah, K90 Advantix, and we also have a mail-in rebate for six, I'm looking into the camera with that light, now I can't read, for, for uh, let me see this, six bucks off, this, this is pretty funny. There's a little light on top of the camera, it's like you, when you're in the dentist and you got the light coming down here. So it's also for six bucks off. The Advantix drops, uh, they work. You know, and you just, um, they're easy to put in, you spread the hair apart and you just squeeze the little tube and it goes into it. Now, that being said, we started carrying last year a product called Petlock, which is probably $25, $20 cheaper, less expensive than the Advantix. It works just as well. It's got the same, same ingredients um, and um, it's, it's just, I'm not gonna say it's a generic, but the Petlock brand has last year took the industry by storm, really. Um, try it, it works. You've got the Petlock, you've got different sizes. Um, and this is, so this is something that's really important. And this happens, and it's so frustrating for us. Sometimes people come in and they think, well, I have a cat and a dog, I'll buy one kind of flea control and I'll use them for both. You can't. Cats are very different than dogs, and stuff, po poisons, stuff that works for a dog may be poisonous to a cat. So if you have a dog and a cat, don't use the same flea control for both of them because they are very, very different products but you need to use it on both of them. So let's say that, it's a little bit early, but it's going to happen. Let's say that you've got fleas in the house, okay? And you come in here, it happens all the time, and say, well, I have fleas in the house. You know, we bathed the dog, we brought the dog to Shannon, we put Soresto on, we've got all this stuff on there, and it still has fleas. Here's the deal with fleas. There's no such thing as a dog has a few fleas. It's like just being a little, a little pregnant. It either has fleas or it doesn't, dog or cat. The problem with fleas is they multiply like crazy and then all of a sudden you have a gazillion of them in your house. So in the old days, you would come in, you would set off foggers, you'd put them on tables, you'd have to leave the house for, you know, for an hour and it just stunk like, like crazy and, that, and that's what it would do. So, my choice. I don't like using foggers. We still sell them because some people are still very old school. What I like is, and this is great preventative medicine, is the carpet and rugs and uh, upholstery spray that you very lightly spray around the house, right? It's, it will not harm pets or kids. And instead of a whole thing going off in one room, you selectively spray where you want it to and very, very lightly. You don't empty a whole can in one room. Here's why I love the, the Zodiac ones. So this has, this one can treats 2,000 square feet, right? That's, a pretty, that's pretty good. So this has, this is why I like it. It effectively kills, it breaks the flea cycle. So let me explain how this works. Let's say there's 500,000 fleas in your house on Monday. You come in, you, you spray this. 
it kills everything that's alive immediately. As the, as the fleas that are eggs hatch, it kills those as well. So sometimes people come in and say, hey, I had fleas, I sprayed this, and I came back the next day, I still have fleas. The reason is because the population is going from, pick a number, 500 to 250 to one. So as those, over the next few days, as those eggs hatch, it kills them. So it cannot kill them like this. It's a few days and it goes down. Here's the beauty of this. The chemical that kills them, which is safe for humans and pets, stays around long enough to completely break the flea cycle. So that is hugely important. Plus it, it kills, it also does ticks, but it's really, if, I don't know if you ever had fleas in your house, it's brutal. So I would use this over this. Now, we have other customers that come in and say, I don't want to use anything that has chemicals. You know, uh, we only want to use all natural stuff. So we now have lots of all natural sprays, collars. The sad news is they don't work as well as, um, you know, it's like if you really want to kill mosquitoes, it, you got to use DEET, right? DEET is not human made, it's a chemical, but if you really want it to work, that's what you have to do. So we have all these natural things and some people swear by them, which is great. Um, but for those dogs that are really sensitive or they have skin issues, they have this or that, then we have all, all the all natural things like this. Dave, my indoor cat got fleas, so even indoor ones. Can so John just, yeah, I don't know if they, they, John just said his indoor cat got fleas, which is incredible. It never, the, the cat never goes out? No. Nope. Well, track something in. So something track, in. somebody track, track oh, something in. And the interesting thing is it's so early in the season, we haven't had a heat wave, but what we have had is a lot of wet weather. So if you have a real, you know, fleas population goes down, but when you get wet weather, it just, um, it, it explodes. So what did you, how'd you get rid of them? With the Advantix stuff. With the Advantix, right. Yep, you gotta do it. So anyway, um, protect your, uh, protect your, your pets, folks. All right, uh, so do we have another segment or are we? I think that's it. No, that's it. Okay, folks, have a great week. We'll see you next week. Hey, kids, party with the animals at Dave's Soda and Pet City. That's right, you can have your next birthday party at Dave's. You get a host, 30 minutes of bounce house playtime, a private animal exhibit in the party room to interact with our reptiles, birds, and furry friends. If you have a birthday coming up, tell your parents about Dave's. Learn about the variety of pets and pet care at Dave's. Party with the animals for your birthday at Dave's Soda and Pet City in Agawam or Hadley. Party at Dave's. One, zero.